Hey everyone, welcome back to our exploration of criminal justice, an overview of the system. I'm Dr. Adam McKee, and today we're journeying through section 1.5.2, diving deep into the later stages of the criminal justice process, sentencing, appeals, corrections, and what it means to be released from the system. Let's break down these complex phases and understand their crucial roles in justice delivery. Sentencing. After a guilty verdict is reached, the criminal justice process advances to sentencing, a crucial phase where a judge formally determines the consequences of the defendant's actions, and in some jurisdictions, by a jury. The nature of sentencing is diverse, encapsulating a spectrum of penalties tailored to the gravity of the offense and the offender's criminal background. Options include monetary fines, which serve as a financial penalty, probation, allowing the offender supervised freedom as an alternative to incarceration, and jail or prison time, which isolates the offender from the general public. Federal judges play a critical role in this process for federal prosecutions, adhering to detailed sentencing guidelines issued by the United States Sentencing Commission. These guidelines are designed to promote consistency and fairness in sentencing, taking into account various factors, including the severity of the crime, the defendant's prior criminal record, and the extent of their cooperation with law enforcement authorities. By applying these guidelines, judges aim to achieve multiple objectives, to punish the offender for their actions, to protect society by deterring both the individual and others from committing similar crimes in the future, and, where possible, to rehabilitate the offender, guiding them towards reintegration into society as a law-abiding citizen. This multifaceted approach underscores the sentencing phase's significance, highlighting its role in upholding justice, deterring criminal behavior, and fostering rehabilitation and redemption. Appeal. In the intricate web of the justice system, the possibility of errors during trial proceedings is acknowledged, necessitating a vital corrective mechanism, the appeal. This process empowers defendants to seek a review of the trial's outcome by a higher court, provided they can substantiate the occurrence of a legal mistake that could have influenced the verdict. The right to appeal underscores the justice system's dedication to upholding fairness and integrity, ensuring that every individual's trial adheres to the legal standards established to protect their rights. The appellate process, however, is governed by stringent criteria. It is not an avenue for retrial or a platform for expressing dissatisfaction with the trial's outcome based on subjective disagreement. Instead, it is a focused examination of whether procedural or substantive legal errors were made that substantially impacted the trial's fairness or the correctness of the verdict. This underscores the system's commitment to justice, allowing for the rectification of genuine legal missteps that could otherwise lead to unjust convictions or penalties. Yet, the scope of appealable issues is limited, highlighting the need for appellants to clearly demonstrate how the alleged error violates legal principles or precedents. The appeal process embodies the balance between finality in legal proceedings and the flexibility to correct miscarriages of justice, exemplifying the justice system's complex endeavor to ensure that fairness prevails in every aspect of adjudication. Corrections. The realm of corrections extends far beyond the mere imposition of sentences, it represents a comprehensive framework designed to both penalize and rehabilitate offenders. This dual objective underscores the system's profound commitment to not only uphold justice through punishment but also to foster the conditions necessary for the reintegration of individuals back into society as constructive citizens. The correction system employs a multifaceted approach to achieve these ends, incorporating measures such as probation, which allows offenders to live within the community under supervision, parole, granting conditional release from incarceration, and a variety of rehabilitation programs aimed at addressing the root causes of criminal behavior. This intricate network of interventions reflects a deep-seated societal conviction about the potential for personal transformation and redemption. By balancing punitive measures with rehabilitative support, the correction system endeavors to mitigate the risk of recidivism and encourage positive social contributions from those who have veered into criminality. It embodies a nuanced understanding of criminal behavior as a phenomenon that can be addressed through targeted, constructive interventions. In essence, the corrections landscape is a manifestation of society's broader philosophical stance on justice, punishment, and the inherent capacity for change, striving to reconcile the need for public safety with the rehabilitative needs of offenders. Release from the system. Release marks the transition back to society, with parole offering a structured reintroduction with specific conditions like employment and regular check-ins. Successfully completing a sentence means freedom from these conditions, but the journey doesn't end there. Reintegration can be challenging, highlighting the importance of support systems and rehabilitation programs in ensuring a smooth transition. 
The Criminal Justice Funnel Envision the criminal justice process as a funnel, broad at its opening with the influx of reported crimes and progressively tapering through subsequent phases such as arrests, trials, and sentencing. This imagery captures the essence of the system's operation, where not every case culminates in incarceration. Along this journey, numerous cases are filtered out or find resolution through means other than imprisonment. This attrition is not merely incidental but reflects the judicious and selective application of justice. The funnel metaphor underscores a critical insight into the criminal justice system's workings, the acknowledgement that the path from accusation to punishment is neither linear nor predetermined. As cases progress through the system, factors such as evidentiary strength, legal standards, prosecutorial discretion, and alternative sentencing options come into play, steering outcomes in diverse directions. This process highlights the system's adaptability and its capacity to tailor responses to the unique circumstances of each case. Moreover, the funnel serves as a reminder of the system's underlying principles, suggesting that incarceration, while a necessary tool for dealing with certain offenses, is not the universal or invariably preferred solution. It points to a broader array of objectives, including rehabilitation, restitution, and community safety, which can sometimes be better served through alternatives to incarceration. In doing so, the criminal justice funnel not only illustrates the process's inherent selectivity but also its alignment with the nuanced goals of justice, emphasizing the importance of judicious, context-sensitive approaches to crime and punishment. Conclusion Understanding sentencing, appeals, corrections, and release illuminates the justice system's complexity and its dedication to fairness, rehabilitation, and societal protection. It's a process that embodies our collective legal and moral principles. As we turn the page from the procedural aspects of criminal justice, our next adventure brings us to the foundation of the American legal framework in Section 2.1, Dual Federalism. Join us as we delve into the complex relationship between state and federal legal systems, exploring how this dual structure influences everything from law enforcement to legal proceedings. This exploration promises to unveil the unique architecture of American governance and its profound impact on the criminal justice landscape. Subscribe, share, and like for a fascinating dive into the bedrock principles of our legal system. See you in the next video.